I mean, what's better than having one man in person in the studio? I think it's two, Dan, wouldn't it be? Well, that would be the quota. Possibly. It's never been exceeded. It has been exceeded. Yeah. We're only allowed two. It, it, it can never be three, according to Jer. So, Connor McManus is in the studio. Morning, Connor. How are things? Ian, how are you? Keep it well. Keep Good, it well. Yeah, thank you. If, uh, if you had a euro for every time someone asked you if you're continuing on next year, between the last couple of weeks, how many? How much quid would you have? <laughs> I think I might start charging, all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's 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 a uh, it's a hot topic when, whenever somebody meets you. But listen, it's it, to be fair, people people I suppose mean well. You know, they're not they're not overly intrusive, and and they probably are all conscious of probably not asking you, but still ask you at the same time. But um, listen, yes, yeah, it's it's it's, it's uh, people people do mean well. Like. It, it is. Do you think people try and retire sports people too early? Like this, this conversation seems to come up as soon as someone hits a, a certain age. I don't know if it's thirty-two or three or four, but all of a sudden, then it's just it's almost like a pressure is put on them. When yeah, well, definitely within GEA anyway. Um, it seems to be once you hit that thirty, thirty-one mark at all, that 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 conversation keeps coming up and keep is fairly at the end of every year. It's sort of, but I suppose when you get into the mid-30s it's certainly something that comes up at the end of every season but um, listen I suppose if you, if you look at if you look at last weekend and the dubs are a, a prime example of that you know Mick Fitzsimons James McCarthy Stephen Cluxton so I, I don't think I think if, if the body and mind is willing there's no reason if, if for players to be to be pulling out as early you know yeah so you won't, you won't make it we have a photo that I think we can put up on screen of yourself and your, your parents after the after the semi-final against uh, Dublin Frank and Mary there like everyone was sharing that photograph everyone was sharing that there was a photograph of you walking down the tunnel as well from behind like all these emotional and people I guess reading into certainly Monaghan fans as well reading into you walking onto the pitch afterwards and kind of taking a little moment to yourself but I guess people are going to read too much into these little things. Yeah, well, listen, it's it, they're, they're supposed they're just snapshots of 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 I suppose after the game that they, they don't really tell the story because there's no story to tell. <laughs> um, I I don't know myself what's happening, so I, you know people can obviously can make their own assumptions and 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 ideas. Listen, it may be the case, and and it may could it could well turn out that everybody is right or was right, but but there's there's certainly no I no decision made either way as to what. As to what the plan is or what what's happening, I'll, I'll focus on the club season now with Clontibret, and um, we'll 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 give that our all over the next six or eight weeks. See where that takes us, and then we'll we'll sort of take stock towards the end of end of end of December, start of January. See what way the the body's feeling. Um, talk to Vinny, and um, we'll we'll take it from there. How all consuming is it? Like, how easy <clears throat> do you find find it to switch off? You know, after you lose. Dublin game do you sort of are you good at sort of taking a couple of days or does it, do you still carry it with you everywhere no, I wouldn't be great at that now to be honest with yeah. you um, you know some players are different and, and like you see players in, in within your own dressing room and some players in, in other counties are just better at doing that than, than others you know I, I wouldn't be particularly good at it um, I'd be I'd be fairly grumpy now for a for a good long period of time after it you know um, I suppose that that maybe comes with with um, with age as well and and you know that you know chances are are running out you know so but that there's probably an element of that involved with it as well you know yeah because I think I was saying that from the perspective of keeping going again like some people clearly they know how to recharge the batteries and but but obviously if you're sort of quite intense and you bring it with you that can be probably quite draining as well in a way you know it's yeah well I suppose that's that's just I suppose what, what I was saying there was I was probably carrying the, the, the defeat with me that, mm. that particular of the particular game and it takes maybe a week or two to get over it but once once you get past that and you, you move on and, and you know there's a lot of other things going on and, and you do realise there's a lot more important things Things going on yeah. as well, like so. You have to. It just maybe takes a week or so to get a bit of perspective on it, you know. Um, but you move on, and as I say, you jump into other things, and you get 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 involved with the the club again, and um, hopefully we can we can give that a good run, you know. I'm not going to kickstart a man and siege mentality thing here, but there's certainly a lot of conversations across the year, and definitely in the build up to the to the Dublin game. Um, I think, and I'd said it on air as well. Jeremy Connolly calling it a, a, a foregone conclusion. I think was the was the phrase he used. And I've heard you speaking even since the match, and you're talking about the fact that everyone's going on now, like, oh, this was a brilliant year for Monaghan to get to a semi final. But I know that's not the way you would see it no no like because we, at the end of the day we, we, we don't have anything to show for it you know um, we don't have silverware but I suppose like at the end of the day 
there's 31 other teams that are sitting looking at it like that as well you know only one team can, can win the All-Ireland and obviously Dublin done that last weekend so every other team sitting on looking at that I suppose in envy and, and we're no different we we had a chance to put ourselves into an All-Ireland final you know with, with 8 or 10 minutes to go against Dublin and, and we, we came up short just like every other team came up short against Dublin this year so um, yeah it, like we, we certainly it, progress potentially yeah you could definitely say that and, and you would like to, to use it as a, as a stepping stone and a building block going into next year for Monaghan but certainly not a, a successful year insofar as we didn't actually win anything you know Are you able to watch the, the final then or are you looking at it from a Monaghan perspective that that should be or could well, have been potentially you've, us? You've always a wee bit of that then you? you know the, the, the what if you know and we, we, we could have been there and there's no doubt we could have been there if, if we had maybe done things differently in the, in the last 8 or 10 minutes but again I go back to it there's a lot of teams have said that about Dublin and playing Dublin in, in, in not just this year but over the last 10 years you know um, the, the they, they're very good at closing games out and, and again they did it did it last week against the All-Ireland Champions who, who, who were Kerry obviously at the time that they beat them I think was at 7-2 in the closing stages so um, I suppose everybody has that sad story to, to tell you know so we're, 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 we're no different but we're, we're obviously disappointed with it Hindsight's obviously 2020 like what would you what would you do differently in the in those last five ten minutes from a modern perspective if you could get them back again? Yeah, listen, it's it's very very small details, very very small details. Like you know, Dublin, I think we were we got it level with 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 maybe eight minutes to go. Dublin got up and got the next score, and we end up getting caught on on a short kick out. Um, with the next kick out, obviously Paul Mannion gets the free. Dublin get pressed up on us again, and and they, they have a real hard press on our kick out. So it's I suppose it's just the, the, the small details that getting out of that initial press on the on the first short kick out. If we get out of that press, Dublin have a, have a lot of players invested in 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 pressing us at that mm-hmm. point in the game. If we just get it out and get it moved across we probably get up the field and, and, and get a shot away um, because we, Dublin obviously had a lot of players invested at that period in the game so you, you, you're looking at really really small details you know but again they're the, they're the small details that, that add up and then again I suppose as well as that we, we turned over too much ball in, in, in that in that seven or eight minute period um, and Dublin thrive on turnovers and we would have talked about that before the game you know Mick Fitzsimons was was marking yourself I know you've had many battles with Mick over the over the years Um many people I suppose he could or should have been man of the match for, for how he helped I guess shuffle David Clifford out of the game for all intents and purposes last weekend what's it like having Mick marking you because he's, he's, a, he's a a tight marker and he, he's someone you've had unbelievable games with over the years like yeah no listen Mick Fitzsimons there's no secret to it the man is nine all Ireland's like and you, you don't get that for for nothing uh, yeah I have some some great battles with him over the years Um some I've come out on top of, some he's come out on top of, and and I suppose that's the nature of you know corner by corner forward relationships. Um, but yeah, listen, he he's he's been a serious servant to, to Dublin. You know, who's the toughest defender you've ever come up against? Um, geez. there's been a few. There's been a few. Yeah, there's been a few. Um, Neil McGee would have always would always be one that would spring to mind. Y- y- you never got anything soft there. Um, but even even in Monaghan training, like you know, you, you always had the likes of Ryan Wiley, Colin Walsh, through through Wiley, these boys cl- clipping at your heels every night in training. You know, so you were always going into into games well prepared. But I suppose the likes of Neil McGee was was a very tough one. Mark O'Shea, I would have marked, you know, in in earlier years with 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 Monaghan. Um, again, like he was the kind of player that could could you know be defensive and and be as tight and tough a, a, as you like, but also go up the field and sell you a shoulder dummy and kick it over with his left foot. Like so, he he had it all as well. But listen, there's been there's been loads there's been loads of tough days out. You know, mm. the. The Armagh game in the quarterfinal is one I think that live in Monaghan fans' memories for a long time. It was unbelievable. Uh, like just back and forth. I don't think any team led by two uh, throughout. Uh, it was just one of those exciting games. And then, of course, you're sprung from the bench. Ashley O'Reilly was covering the game for us in the sideline and she said you were warming up and, I don't know, you were like a, a, a cow in spring nearly trying to get out onto the pitch at that stage, just desperate to, to be able to do something about it. Um, and when you come on, like, what's going through your head when, when Rain O'Neill kicks that last score what, what, what we think is the last score for Armagh to win it yeah um, well firstly you could hardly hear yourself thinking with, with the noise like the, the noise the Armagh crowd brought after that particular score was, was crazy like the, the stadium was rocking um, but you just felt 
we, we, we just need to force one opportunity here or we, we will get a chance here and, and to be fair I, I was running out from, from Rain O'Neill having got that score with me back to the play which isn't <laughs> if you're sitting analysing it it's not exactly what you're supposed to be doing but before I knew it Rory had the ball down and Carol O'Connell had the ball taken up the field like so we responded very well straight away to that score we got the ball down we got we got possession and, and we got an attack going so once you got an attack going you, you felt that you were going to get a chance somewhere along the line and, and, and luckily enough we, 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 we just managed to, to, to squeeze a chance out of it and, and force force injury or force penalties wasn't it yeah mm. How difficult is it as a sub coming off the bench to get to the pitch of a game like that straight away like a, a very intense game you know and you, you hear, often hear sports people speak about those first couple of minutes about coming in it can be a challenge like how is that something you've been able to develop yeah it's 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 um, it can it can be tricky because like the, the pace of them games you know and pace of them you know quarterfinals semifinals in, in Crow Park you know they're, they're they're all consuming like so it, it can be it can be a tricky thing but it's I suppose when you're when you're on, in that role you have to be sort of watching the game and obviously no one that you're coming in and, and trying to pick your pick your moments and, and and obviously have a fair idea as to who you're coming on against and things like that so it's just, it's just trying to trying to hit the ground running as quick as you can very often just your first touch things like that there making sure you nail your first touch not come on and spill your first ball yeah. and things like that there so just just small simple things like that there just to get you get you into the game yeah Mm. Carol Kane had a had a great stats where he, uh, Vinnie Corey after the match called you the greatest clutch player in Monaghan's history. Nine goals and two hundred and forty points at that point in Championship football. One forty three of that, which is eighteen percent, scored after the sixtieth minute, uh, and and a good portion of that thirty six percent from play as well. And that's not even counting the league. So, is that something that when you get to when it gets to that point of the game, Monaghan are a point down. They're trying to force extra time you wanted the ball it was quite clear that you wanted to be the person who, who got the ball off Rory Began or, or Carlo Connell I can't remember which which uh, laid it off to you you know, Banning maybe pass it off but, but you wanted to be the one to take that last shot or or I guess be fouled and in the end it was you that was, that was fouled for that free kick yeah but listen I suppose that's 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 the nature of, of your job you're in there as a, as a, as a I suppose a scoring forward and, and that's that's your that's your role you know them last ten minutes, I suppose, are, are when when games are won and lost. You know, particularly in championship football, and it tends to be where things sort of open up a wee bit. Mm. You know, you look even last last week. You know, from a, from a from a Kerry point of view, Clifford I think touched the ball maybe once in the first twenty two or three minutes because the game is often very tight and yeah. cagey and 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 things aren't that overly open. But in the last ten minutes of of them big games, things become a wee bit more more chaotic and, and, and opportunities probably do arise so you just have to be ready when when them times do come you know the the game goes to penalties then ultimately and uh, I mean just the utmost drama I think it was 17 penalties all in all 98 um, Monaghan eventually coming out on the right side of it you, 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 the nature of the penalties now is you pick your five takers and then if it's sudden death the same five lads go again which mm. is it could be deemed harsh I guess but it, well, it's tough on those lads especially um you know the Armagh player missed the missed the two two kicks. You your two penalties were just ridiculous. Like top left, top right. Um, had you practiced them in advance? Was this a scenario you, you were preparing for? No, we 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 hadn't practiced them. We 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 talked about it. We talked about it before the Kildare game. I think it was because that was that was obviously knockout at that stage. Um, and we decided against it because <clears throat> I suppose number one, you don't necessarily who's going to be on the field at any particular time. But as well as that. Um, if you if say if you're practicing penalties on the Friday night and the game's so, so Sunday and some man misses it, that could be in his head, you know, before before he steps up. So um, I suppose it's 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 a case of who's on the field at, at any particular time and then you know who has gone well during the game, whose confidence is up and things like that. There, so um, yeah, it's it's a fairly dramatic experience, you know, to be to be at that level and. You know, in in them circumstances, knowing that one miss could potentially see us see us knocked out here, um, and, and and I suppose going back to the the same five players kicking, like I, I was up first that particular day, and as soon as mine hit the net, I was thinking, right, happy days, as I can mm. clock out here now, <laughs> and it comes back round a second time, and and it looked like for a long time it was going to come back round a third time. So, um, yeah, it's it's a difficult scenario, but at the same time, for any of them players involved in that shootout, there's nowhere else you'd rather be either. Like you know what I mean? 
that's that's I suppose that they are the moments that you train for. They're the moments that you want to be involved in, and, and yeah, listen, it's I suppose it's a difficult way to lose a game, but ultimately it's probably good entertainment as well for for fans and for spectators, you know. The practice in those uh, penalties and frees, was it yourself saying, someone certainly said in the past before who's a free taker in, in Gaelic football, like when you're, when you're a kid out in the back garden, I'm sure it was just re- repetition, repetition. Rory Began famously with his dad used to go out and I think maybe try and kick 10 in a row without missing before he could come back inside or, or whatever else. So was it similar similar for you in the garden when you were a kid that yeah, this was a... Yeah, yeah, you just, you just, you're always outside till, 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 till dark. Um, kicking and pretending you're Peter Canavan or pretending you're Mickey Lynn or whoever it was at the time um, but yeah no absolutely no different I think every kid's the same um, and I suppose that's where the I suppose the love of the game is born out of is, is that just that I suppose that initial enthusiasm for playing football and, and that initial love of playing football you know the, you could see before that kick uh, it's a, look it's a relatively straightforward free for, uh, from your your standards but in the I guess the scenario in which it is if you miss Monroe out of the championship so it, it, there's no easy kick at that uh, no uh, no and, and I suppose that there, are, there are things that you particularly obviously I wasn't starting now on my game so you, you're visualising bits and pieces com, coming up to that game and, that, and that, that's a scenario that you would have played through your head you know a, a last minute free to either win it or equalise it and things like that so there, there are things that you would be rolling through your head coming into the game and you you know, practicing before the game, you know, in their last training session, things like that, just just trying to have every angle covered that that for for what may arise, you know. Um I think it was two thousand and five, was it, that, that Canavan was in a substitute mm-hmm. role against yeah. against Armagh in a similar position in a similar similar scenario and, and obviously he, he, he knocked it over. Um difference was they went on and won the All Ireland. Um but yeah, they're the, they're the sort of the scenarios and circumstances you would you would be rolling through your mind, as I say, particularly when you're not starting the game. So you know, chances are you're going to be there or thereabouts in, in them closing stages and be on the field in them in them closing stages. You know, so um, yeah, listen, that was one of the days that it worked out. Don't know how much sledging is still a thing, but uh, certainly, ju- judging from the, even the TV pictures afterwards, a couple of the Armagh lads might have had a couple of things to say to you. Maybe they were wishing you the best of luck with your with your mm. kick. So, uh, yeah, listen, you, you, you're, you're are you are you hearing that at that not time? Not really. No, you're 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 not you're not paying any heed to it at all. Listen. I suppose that's only natural. You, you, as a as a player in the opposition side, in them scenarios, you, you'll say anything or do anything to, to make sure that this game doesn't go to penalties or make sure that you win the game. So, from that point of view, it's it's totally normal. And and from from my point of view or the kicker's point of view, you're just you're not you're just letting that all slide, you know. I know Desi Farrell had said after, not that it was any consolation uh, to yourselves or to any Monaghan fans, but he had spoken about how Monaghan were the most improved team he had ever seen. Um, and, and I guess he meant that from the, the Derry game in the Ulster Championship did not go to plan. But then playing Derry in the, in the group stages, you get the draw up in Celtic Park uh, and the performance was a mile different from, from what it had been to, uh, against Derry previously. So was that something that you had sat down and, and discussed? Because you had, you'd had the unbelievable win against Tyrone and Rhino Tool's late goal, but then the disappointment of the Derry game. So was there a, was there a moment after the Derry match where you all kind of sat down? Well, not not one moment as such. Listen, you sit down after every game, and and I suppose we would have been very disappointed with with our performance against Derry. The, the you know in the in the semi final of the championship, um, after having played reasonably well for for half of the previous game against our own because we were very poor in the first half. Uh, you know that that couldn't go unnoticed either, um, and we 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 just felt that there was you know we had to change things and and we had to 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 be better in a lot of our defensive play. Mm. And and how Derry play, you know, it really it really challenges you. So, listen, the the, the boys trained really really hard, you know, in that period whereby we 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 were obviously knocked out of the Ulster Championship until our first game in the in the All Ireland series, and th- th- there was a massive amount of work went on on the training field to get ready for that game and and the rest of the and the rest of the summer, um, and you could see it you could see it in how we how we played that day how we the boys applied themselves and um, you know we probably unlucky enough not to win the game and in the heel of the hunt probably lucky to get a draw out of that particular game but it, it it's probably solidified what we had talked about and what the boys had worked on on the training field you know. Between between both games, do you pay any heed to the <clears throat> the media talk to uh, what I was calling, suppose, a disrespect towards towards Man in the build-up, even in our own power rankings? And I'm calling out Tommy Rooney here, who does the power rankings with us. But uh, I think Monaghan finished the power rankings in fifth 
and they were in the, the last four of course in the semi-finals and I, I think even when they were in the quarter-finals they might have been ninth so like this is the kind of and there's always the, the phrases rolled out about Monaghan you know um, I guess the, the population is referenced to and, and punching above their weight I mean if if you had a euro every time that phrase was used you'd be a rich man but do you pay t- any attention to that the kind of the media talk very very little listen that some of it's very hard to avoid if you're on if you're on social media and things like that there these things keep popping up and and you do see them Listen, um, people have to form their opinions. That's part of part of you know media. That's part of punditry. Um, some are right, some are wrong, <laughs> some are very wrong. Um, but listen, that's 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 part and parcel of it, and 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 that's that's you know I don't think from a player's point of view yes it, it'll be spoken about maybe here or there but you'll never hang your hat on it or you'll never hang too much attention on it it might be referenced maybe once or twice some certain thing that may be said or done but by and large you, you can't be like what's important is, is what's inside the, the four walls of your dressing room and, and if you allow that stuff into your, your psyche or your mindset on a constant basis you you know you're not really focusing on what you need to be so yes obviously that there's a lot of the media now is, is hard to avoid you know what I mean before if you if you didn't buy a newspaper you wouldn't see anything <laughs> you know what I mean but now it's it's everywhere you know and, and, and some of it's, it's it's hard to avoid so uh, yes you do see it but you don't really pay much heat to it really you know Cause sorry to say that I know <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, it's grand in the off season you can watch but I suppose that, that's the benefit of your experience but can you imagine for a 20 year old now 21 year old who's never Who's never known it any other way? Mm-hmm. Is, is it is it harder for them? It, it probably is, and and like, I suppose that's where that's where you know, working with obviously experienced managers, say the likes of any who's been there and and through it all, or you look at other other dressing rooms. You have obviously Jack O'Connor who has been through it all, Desi Farrell. So players can lean into that, and obviously all all sports teams and all Gaelic teams have, have their own psychologists and things like mm. that so younger lads can really tap into that and, 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 and I suppose learn from it and and you know bounce their own thoughts and ideas off these people as well so that, that's that's what that's all there for and geared towards as well um, but I suppose having been there for a, for a period of time and, and you, you come to learn to handle these things and cope with these things in your own way and and don't necessarily need to, to, to bounce it off people as much because you, you've, you've been there and you, you can you can lean on your own experiences more so you know not, not to bring you back to the whole thing about your future but I'm just curious like I mean clearly but you're just gonna there's, well, another, well, there's another euro here we, go, here we go but no it's not even that it's much like the, people talk about longevity and, and keeping going like how much do you enjoy the winters like as I imagine like the, the, the last the summer and the, the, the big games and it's clear like you know that's the buzz that's the thrill that's what you grew up dreaming about but how do you find the December the January that sacrifice is that the hardest part of it as opposed to yeah, you know well, being there in the summer I mean of course it's obvious appeal if you talk to some of the boys in the dressing room they say I don't um, December's and January's haven't troubled me too much in the last <laughs> while <now." laughs> yeah. um, but uh, yeah that, that, that it is difficult to, to navigate your way through them seasons and, and you know I, Obviously, I have to just manage the, the the injury or the hip a wee bit more. Yeah. So I, I'm not out doing that slog in, in December and January this last number of years. Um, but even when you're not doing that, you're in the you're in the gym and you're doing your rehab and you're you know doing your own conditioning and it's testing. It definitely is like it because. You, the bit the, the more the more you, you want to be out in the field you want to be yeah. training out as tough as they are in in them times of the year that's where you want to be is on the pitch with the boys and 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 you know going through that going through that slog and it can be difficult there's no two ways about it i've yet to meet any any intercounty footballer that has played that that say, puts his hand up and says he enjoys that it's a it's a necessary evil it has to be done and you're just trying to get yourself back in shape and 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 get a base level of fitness that will sort of carry yeah. you through the the season but the that's that can be the the challenge. There's no doubt. Like it's always there, even if you're not out there. You have that responsibility. That's always there. Yeah, yeah, and and as well as that, as most Gaelic footballers over uh, over the last number of years are are coming back into pre-season in better shape because mm. the, 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 the sort of the lifestyle just rolls from one year to the next, whereby you're always tipping away in the gym and keeping yourself in shape and things like that. So there's not the same, you know there's not the same grind coming back as maybe there used to be whenever yeah. I would have been involved first with Monaghan whereby you'd have you know men coming back in and they were a stone and two stone yeah. overweight you know 
Darren Hughes being the exception to that, that he, he does that every year. Um, but like most, more often than not, players are are coming back in 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 fairly good shape, and um, it's it's not as big a grind, but it still doesn't make it any yeah. easier. You still have to get through that that six or eight week block, and and it's it's it's, it's tough. Like yeah, mm. hope Darren's watching this morning. He'll enjoy that one. <laughs> uh, the, the, does it when you eventually make that decision uh, ultimately to to keep going or not going? As you say, it'll be the body and how you feel later on in the year, maybe. Does Vinnie Corey being in charge have an impact? Because I mean, he's club mate of yours with Clinton, but he's a good friend of yours as well. So I'd imagine, you know, if there's anyone going to be in charge to convince you to stay on, it would be Vinny. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it, 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 it will. I suppose I'll not make any decisions on without talking to Vinny and having a having a chat with Vinny. Absolutely, because. Um, Obviously, he, number one, he's the manager. But as well as that, yeah, you have that relationship. You, if he wasn't the manager, he's the kind of guy that you would probably be bouncing things off anyway. You know what I mean? Regardless, so um, yeah, he absolutely will. He'll, he'll be a factor in that, and he'll be he'll be somebody that I'll be chatting to before and and during the the, the, the thought process. And listen, it's, it's not something like you, you you nearly get fed up talking about it and people ask you and, and you go back over the same things and you're talking about injury and your hip and all this here and you, you're Sorry conscious that, that you know, <laughs> you're, but even from my own point of view you're yeah. conscious that you just people are sitting listening oh jeez will you give it a rest with this hip you know what I mean so it's it's something that I'll I'll, I'll, I'll not give too much thought to at the minute um, and we'll we'll see where, where things are at sort of December January time and, and we'll give it every chance anyway Do you, do you like the current or the new championship structure I get having the Ireland final in July feels a bit strange but how do players like it I guess you get a bit of the summer uh, I personally don't like it right. um, I, th- I think the season is far too condensed um, you know we had a the, the, the structure is okay like mm. the, 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 the round robin series probably worked reasonably well Um there was some entertaining games towards the back end of it there was some not so entertaining games Um but by and large, I think the structure of it is, is quite good. But I think we've we've gone we've done a total one eighty on it from say where the the championship used to finish in the third Sunday in September. We've 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 just completely gone you know against that and, mm. and crammed it far too much. I I think somewhere in between maybe end of August would be would be a reasonable um, would be a reasonable comp- compromise because at the end of the day you're only really affecting four teams that are going to be yeah. in that latter stages every other club in the in the country can crack on like our, our championship isn't starting we're out of the of the of obviously the all ireland championship now three weeks at this stage or two weeks and our championship doesn't start for another two weeks so th- it's not as you couldn't say that we're under major yeah. pressure you know so and and I, I just feel that we've taken the 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 g out of the shop window somewhat um the build up to the to these big games used to be a two and three week build up mm-hmm. and there was so much content around it. You're really only getting over the All Ireland hurling final on the Monday, the Tuesday, and all of a sudden you're getting yeah. straight back into the, the football final on the on the following week. So I definitely think we're 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 selling ourselves short there. Um players could have a wee bit more <clears throat> of a gap between some of the big games like and it's not. I'm not saying this specifically because it happened to us this year, whereby we were in the last twelve, and then obviously we had we had yeah. the quarter final the following week. But by and large, teams should have more time to get ready for for big All Ireland quarter finals, All Ireland semi finals, and that. So, um, I definitely think there's 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 something that can be done to to elongate the season a wee bit more and, and space it out a wee bit. The other controversial one, I guess, is that mm. we had Davy Burke sitting in here recently in the studio, and he was lamenting the attacking Mark uh, and saying you know he was at a game earlier in the year and I think he said Conor Callaghan catches the ball in the full forward line and just takes his mark instead of back in the day would have obviously taken on the defender and possibly had a goal chance um, you're you're obviously a player who utilises and makes use of the attacking mark consistently and, and I get a number of scores even in the semi-final from, that, from the attacking mark do you like it? Yeah, oh, I'm all for it <laughs> <laughs> um, no I, I can see both both arguments it it, it it does slow the game down, and and it can, it can, um, you know, take away from I suppose some of the attacking plays, and, and that that we don't know what would happen because the game automatically stops, and it's it's mm. you know players are taking their point. Um, but uh, as 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 a, as a result, I suppose it's come in as a result of a lot of defensive systems and and you know men teams getting ten and twelve and thirteen players behind the ball. So I do feel it maybe 
keeps defenders a wee bit more honest you know at times where you can't really stand off your player as such because there's, there's the threat of an, of an attacking mark so it does maybe put a wee bit more onus on, on man to man defending or one on one defending as well so I can see why it was it was introduced um, it's, there's arguments to and, to and for um, for and against it Um I don't think it has had a massive bearing on the game. You know, like it, how often does it get used altogether? Maybe twice or three times in a game. Mm. So I don't think it. I don't think it has a massive bearing on the on the game. You know. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's it's an interesting one. I, I personally like it as well. Uh, at times, and sometimes you know, when, when if strikers in in the full forward line, it can it can kind of take away from the game. But I, I do see both points of view. Um, Connor, brilliant with your time. Um, Thanks, yeah. Look after the hip. Look after the body. Hopefully come back. I, you should have seen the state of me now on, on the the night of the the All Ireland semi final. I was in the the pubs, the nightclubs of of Man on the Course, celebrating celebrating the year that was, uh, drowning the sorrows. I had the at different points of the night. I think I bumped into you at one stage, bumped into Darren Hughes, and bumped into Carlo Connell, three of the veterans of the Man and Team, of mm-hmm. course. And I think I said the same thing to him: just leave it, just. <laughs> just give us a bit of time give us a bit of time I think so I think I speak for all modern fans when I say look you make the right decision for yourself anyway in, in the end of it and hopefully from a modern perspective it's a good one for us as well so yeah. thanks many Connor for coming all right, much appreciated as always